Hello tribe, this is Benny Lubengo. Allow me to interrupt your day for a few seconds so that you can get this right. Now, today I want to talk about the tools or rather the forces that back up your ideas. It is always important to understand that anytime you're going to package your idea, there are things that scale it up. For example, uh, when you're going to present a meal in a five-star hotel, there's always something that comes before. It's called uh, an appetizer. So they'll bring you some ice cream, they'll bring you some cake, there are things they'll bring so that you can just be able, you know, to prepare your appetite or they can even bring you soup. And then there's a main course meal. And then after that, they'll bring you some juice. So an idea also needs those three things. There's a part where you come with something called appetizer, there's a main meal, and then there's the after meal. Now, those three parts are very important. What is the appetizer? For example, when you're going to present, let's say, an idea, something like a proposal, it's always important that when you walk in that boardroom, you don't first begin by reading the proposal. You first begin by your personal journey or your personal story. I came to realize that people don't buy your ideas first. The first thing that people buy is you as a product. Someone said, before they hear you, they will first see you. So it's always important to understand that you are the first product before your idea. Therefore, if people don't buy you first, at the same time, it might be very hard for you to actually sell the product. Unless it is a virtual product, something like an email, something that people might not really buy into the person. But if you're walking in a room to sell an idea for the very first time, people first buy you as a person. And then after that, now they buy the product. Now, the appetizer is first your story. You must begin with the story of the product. And after that, then the main meal, now presenting the idea. Now, there's something called an after meal. What is an after meal? Is your idea written? For example, let's say you're an author. You've worked in an office and you've not come with your books, yet you're saying you're an author. It will be very hard for these people actually to buy into your ideas. We are living in a world where opportunities flow every day. You can be seated in a car and then all of a sudden the person who is seated next to you is actually the person who has your opportunity. And so it's always important to work with your tools of destiny. I've always said that if you're a photographer, work with your camera in the bag. If you're a graphics designer, work with your laptop. If you're an author, work with your book. If you're an idealistic, futuristic person, maybe you lead a startup, work with that proposal, work with that business plan. Because when you meet people randomly, there's something called an intuitive feeling. Maybe you've just engaged them at that single time. And so it's always important to get your bag and tell this person, but this is what I've already done. When you do that, it also shows the aspect of preparedness. And an after meal also backs up your idea. It's always, it's always important as a young person, whether you're building your career in anything, have something like a portfolio. Maybe you're a chef. Have you gathered all the clients that you have worked with, all the hotels that you've worked with? Have they given you reviews? It's always important to remember a word is very powerful, sometimes more than money. Endorsements are very key. So when you meet people, did you take pictures with them? There's always an evidence that backs up your idea. Now, you can be in a room where every person has ideas, but very few people have evidence. Evidence concretes whatever you're saying and it also compensates for ideas. So always remember, even as you're building your ideas, even as you're building your vision, it's always important to gather the evidence. And I'd encourage you, that's why it's important to always remember the three opportunities in life. The first opportunity may never reward you. It will help you to move from an amateur or a novice to become an expert. The second opportunity might help you build relationships. The third opportunities might reward you. So when I began my public speaking career, I had to speak in children's centers for free. I had to speak in churches for free, different places for free, without looking at the aspects of income. And even till to date, the opportunities where I don't charge. And then after some time, I started getting opportunities where they would tell me, we can pay for your fare. And I would be like, it's okay. You can take care of your fuel. It's okay. Now today, the opportunities that I get, it's no longer about fuel. It's no longer about going to speak for free. The rewards that I'm getting. So always remember that. May God bless you. Thank you so much. My name is Walubengo Benihil. It's a pleasure speaking to you.